acceptance, you know this is a resort that really knows how to take care of tennis players and has a passion for taking care of tennis players. Well, you're absolutely right. When you walk in the door, you get a sense that there's something special about the atmosphere. What are the features that make that so special, you think? What's up guys, my name is Jake. Welcome to one of the most surreal places I have ever been. This enormous, almost untouched, 18-acre property has 19 lodging structures, including one six-story tower with three penthouse suites, one of which is where President Bush stayed on the morning of September 11th, 2001. I'll go into some more detail on that later in the video. The property also boasts a massive restaurant complex and 21 tennis courts. Throughout this video, I'll be popping in and out, providing some information on what you're looking at, as well as some history behind it. This video is likely going to get very long, so if you want to skip to some interesting key points in the video, you can do so with the time codes on the screen. Back in 1954, a man named Herb Field, who cleared the land himself, had constructed one of the first resorts on the Strip of Beach. It wasn't until the early 60s when two men had an ambitious idea for a resort. The idea was to build something that would cater to tennis enthusiasts, not with pro tournament courts, but with a fun, recreational atmosphere to play in. Murray Clobber had begun developing the idea and seeking the land to do it on. They settled on the already existing property built by Herb Field. They had purchased the resort for $3.5 million, kept the name, and began constructing their idea in the late 60s. They began with individual wooden loft buildings, and expanded in the 70s and 80s with the tower. I think it's important that I acknowledge that finding this resort won't be very difficult, although I do encourage you not to visit this location yourself. It's not only a legal risk for you, but as you'll see later in this video, it can be a serious safety hazard. Please do not destroy or vandalize anything on the property. The way these rooms were rented out worked pretty well with Clobber's concept. The resort was one of the first to adopt what we know now as the timeshare model. Owners were viewed as investors and were given 30 days a year to use their units. The rest of the time when owners weren't staying there, the units would be rented out just like how a traditional hotel would operate.
god, this is a lot. Hey, hey dear, how's the bedroom? <laughs> yeah, this is freaking awesome. This is crazy. As if the guests were forced out overnight, tons of personal belongings are still left exactly where they were seven years ago. Hello? This was like, someone packed up and left. This is weird. This is so weird. Lamp is still plugged in. Anyone up for some tennis? Through the 70s and into the 90s, this resort became an icon of the city, attracting hundreds of thousands of guests, including notable celebrities and figures like Jimmy Carter, Burt Reynolds, Al Gore, and Denzel Washington. This can't be real. Are you serious?
I've read hundreds of reviews and stories of guests staying here, claiming that this resort had a type of atmosphere that most hotels couldn't replicate. So we have a great spa with a multitude of different massage and, and body treatments, a salon where you can get facials and hair and nail treatments. That's creepy. Problems began emerging after the 2004 hurricane season, as repair costs began to quickly add up. Since pretty much all of the buildings are made of wood, maintenance expenses were becoming a serious issue, and on top of the 2006 housing crisis, finances were falling. Clobber, who still owned the resort, was seeking $15,000 per unit paid by the owners to bring the resort back up to standards. During this time, owner Andy Adams, who had three units in the tower, was requesting an extension to his 30 days a year, and the ability to tear down the walls separating his three units and combining them. Since this was in violation of their contract, Clobber refused to allow it. Just check it out. Oh my god. Holy... Adams ultimately joined and became the president of the Association of Unit Owners, and began actively lobbying against Clobber and the resort's management. The association that he joined, which oversaw most of the units in the resort, stated that they would refuse to pay the $15,000 in repair costs.
Repair costs continued to rise, as did the tension between Clobber and the Condo Association. This ultimately resulted in lawsuits being filed, and along with the recession, Clobber's ability to keep the resort operating was deteriorating. In 2007, Clobber alleged the Condo Association owed $14 million in repair costs. As a federal bankruptcy judge denied the request, the resort filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 2009, which eventually turned into Chapter 7 in 2010. On the 11th of August, 2010, the resort officially closed. Access to the units that weren't owned by Clobber were shut off as they were deemed uninhabitable which is likely why the majority of the resort is exactly the way it was left in 2010. This is the first penthouse unit in the building, and it's quite a spectacular one, fitted with its own rooftop pool. Oh my god. Oh my god. This penthouse was owned and lived in by Murray Clobber and his family. In June of 2013, everything in this unit had been sold at auction. It is incredibly sad considering the items that were put up for auction were collectibles, antiques, and pieces of art. It seemed like everything they owned was liquidated. The second floor of their penthouse is Clobber's office, which still contains tons of documents and photographs of all sorts.
What the hell? Oh, this is a model. Yeah, that's a model. a model of the development. I don't know what development this was though. In this very room, President George W. Bush fell asleep on September 10th, 2001. He woke up here the next day on September 11th, went for his morning run, then traveled to a school in Sarasota where he was notified that two aircraft had hit the World Trade Center. Oh my god. That's weird. Something this resort was well known for was its restaurant and bar called the Monkey Room. There's a waterfall right here. On the arrival of President Bush on September 10, 2001, a large dinner celebration was set up to welcome the president. A special menu was created for the occasion, as both President Bush and State Governor Jeb Bush ate dinner. Watch for bees. The last place it's there.
Amazingly, seven years later, the kitchen pantry still has some food and beverages stocked. The resort right now is sitting on incredibly sought after land. And the first question I asked when we found this place randomly was, how is this still here? Well, the land is in a very complicated and legal nightmare right now. In 2014, a developer had purchased the land for $15 million, and has proposed several concepts to build, all of which have been denied by the community. There are also still people who own units in the resort, and the new developers are desperately attempting to buy them out. In 2016, two very small service buildings were demolished, as they were the only structures they can legally take down. The current developer hopes to have a new resort on the site by 2020, but at the rate they're making progress in, it doesn't seem all that likely. The pool, which I believe is the only standing remnant of the first iteration of the resort, has certainly seen better days. This resort came off the dream of Murray Clobber, who operated the resort for over 40 years. It achieved incredibly high esteem with guests and tennis enthusiasts. It's not only surreal to see such an incredible beach resort sit abandoned like this, untouched, with beds still made, but also really sad to see what Murph Clobber, who seems like a really sweet man, had built up, achieved amazing success, only to end up here. One of the only reasons this resort lasted so long in its active and abandoned state is because Murph had fought to repair and keep the resort going. The legal trouble followed soon after, though. I'm going to leave you on a quote from Murray's daughter, who acted as general manager, said in 2010, quote, What's really important is my family spent 40 years creating a very special place that became a world-renowned destination. At least the legacy that is the colony cannot change. Thanks for watching, everyone.